Okay, so for uh, video and quiz number eight, we're going to be talking about transitions. Okay, what are transitions? Transitions are words or phrases that help, help us go from one idea to the next in our writing, right? They help the reader, right? They help the reader go from one point to the next. And how do they do that? Well, they do that by showing the relationship between two sentences or two clauses, right? Transitions help to show the relationship between two sentences or two clauses. And so what do we mean by that? What do we mean by a relationship? Well, let's, let's look at some examples, right? Eight feet of snow accumulated last night. School was canceled for today. Well, what's the relationship there? What's the relationship between this sentence and this sentence? Well, it's a cause and effect relationship. The eight feet of snow caused the cancellation. So to help the reader see that cause and effect, I include a cause and effect transition word. Therefore, is a cause and effect transition word, right? Let's take a look at the same situation, right? Eight feet of snow accumulated. We still had school today. What's the relationship there? Well, this is going to be a contrast relationship because this is kind of something that we wouldn't expect. It snowed eight feet, but, but we still had school today, right? But and however show a contrast. They show a contrast relationship, okay? So that's how these transitions work, right? They help the reader follow the flow of your writing. They help the reader go from one idea to the next and see the relationship. So on the ACT, there are three relationships that they're going to test you on. There are three relationships that they're going to test you on. Contrast, cause and effect, and continuation. Let's talk about each one very briefly. With contrast, with contrast, transition words, you show a difference or an unexpected result, right? So when you want to show a difference or show something that we don't expect to happen, we can use a contrast transition word. And that's what we did with this, with this second one, right? Eight feet of snow accumulated, but we still had school. That's an unexpected result, right? If it snows eight feet, you would expect that school would be canceled. However, school was not canceled, so it's an unexpected result. So we can use a contrast transition word. Um, cause and effect transition words. Show how one thing leads to the next. One thing leads to the next. When you want to show that cause and effect, one thing leading to the next, you use a cause and effect transition. And then finally, we have continuation. Continuation transition words. That's when you want to continue the same idea, continue the same argument. You might be adding more evidence, more, more evidence to prove the same point. So you're continuing the same idea. Okay? So these are the three relationships that the ACT will test you on. Right? And these are three relationships, three kinds of transitions that you should try to use in your own writing. Whether you're doing, you know, a, a rewrite for your Huck Finn essay coming up in the next couple weeks, or all our essays going forward. Thinking about how, think about how you can use these transitions to take readers from one point to the next, help them follow your argument. Okay? So let's, let's look at each of these three in a, li in a little bit more uh, detail. Okay? We're going to, we'll scroll down a little bit. Okay. Let's take a look at, at contrast transitions first. Okay. Contrast transitions. Remember, they show a difference or an unexpected result. Right. And so there's three different ways that you can use the contrast transition. And you already know a couple of these. We've already been, we've been talking about these all year already. What do we mean by that? I mean fanboy, right? We've been using fanboys all year. So you've been using contrast transitions whenever you use a fanboy. So just remember how we use fanboys, right? Um, 
you take an independent, when you take two independent clauses, right? Two sentences that can be on their own, two independent clauses, you can join them with a comma and a fanboy. And so which, which are our contrast fanboys? But and yet, right? Those are the two fanboys that we can use to show contrast, either a difference or an unexpected result. So let's look at some examples, right? My college apartment had roaches. It was the best time ever. So my college apartment had roaches. That's an independent clause. It was the best time ever. That's an independent clause. And we're gonna connect it with a comma and fanboy but. My college apartment had roaches, but it was the best time ever. That's an unexpected result, right? If a place has roaches, you wouldn't expect it to be the best time ever, right? Um, here, this one shows a difference, right? My sister excels at math, yet I can't even multiply, right? So we've got, again, we've got independent clause, my sister excels at math, I can't multiply, two independent clauses, and we join that with a comma and a fanboy, yet. Let's take a look at one more. I spent two years in Costa Rica, independent clause, right? My Spanish is still terrible independent clause. And we're going to join that with a comma, fanboy, but. We want the contrast fanboy. I spent two years in Costa Rica, but my Spanish is still terrible. Okay? So you guys know how to use those fanboys already, right? Join those two independent clauses. Now, we another kind of contrast that you guys have already been using are is when we use a dependent clause, right? All these words, although, even though, though, while. These are all transition words that help us make a dependent clause, right? So same situation, let's use a dependent clause though instead of the two independent clauses with the fanboy. Let's make a dependent clause. Even though my college apartment had roaches, right? That's a dependent clause, right? Even though my college apartment had roaches. Dependent clause. And then when you have a dependent clause, we know we have to have an independent clause to go with it, right? Even though my college apartment had roaches, it was the best time ever. And we've got an independent clause there, right? Um, while my sister excels at math, right? Dependent clause. While she excels at math, I can't multiply. Independent clause. So you see here, right? You've already been using these contrast transitions. You use them with fanboys, when you use but and yet, and you've been using them when you make dependent clauses. All the, even the, though, why, right? Make a dependent clause to show that contrast, okay? Though I spent two years in Costa Rica. Even though I spent two years in Costa Rica. Although I spent two, you can use any of these, right, to form, to form the dependent clause. Okay? Now, moving on to the third column. These are ones that we haven't gone over as much yet. However, on the other hand, nevertheless, nonetheless, all of these words can be used to show a contrast also. All of these words can be used to show a contrast also, or a show a difference, an unexpected result. But we use them differently than the fanboy and the dependent clause. Here with these, we need to use a period or a semicolon, right? You got to have two separate, you got to separate them with a period or a semicolon, right? So let's, let's see how we use them. My college apartment had roaches, period, right? Period, you got to use the pyramid. When you're using these ones, you got to use a period or a semicolon. Because remember, we said, however is not a fanboy. So you can't put comma however. Nevertheless is not a fanboy. You can't put comma nevertheless. If you want to use these, you have to use a period or a semicolon. So my college apartment had roaches, period. However, comma, it was the best time ever. Or, 
Or you can use a semicolon like this one down here. I spent two years in Costa Rica, semicolon. Nevertheless, my Spanish is still terrible. Okay? So you guys see, all of these, the but and the yet, the dependent clause words, however, on the other hand, conversely, in contrast, meanwhile, all of these, they all show contrast. They all show difference, unexpected result. But we just use a different kind of sentence. Here we use these as a fanboy. Here we have to create a dependent clause. And with these, we're going to have two separate sentences, either with a period or with a semicolon. Okay? And so if you're not familiar with some of these words, study your list. Study this list. If nevertheless is new to you or nonetheless, you gotta, you got to study the list and memorize it. Say, okay, nevertheless, nonetheless, on the other hand, conversely, those are all contrast transitions. Okay? Make sense? All right. Let's look at, let's look at uh, the cause and effect ones now. Okay? Cause and effect transitions. Remember, cause and effect shows how one thing leads to the other. So remember, it's the, same, it's the same thing as the contrast. You're going to use them three different ways. You can use it as a fanboy. You can use a dependent clause. Or you're going to use a period and a semicolon and have two different sentences. Okay? So which, which fanboys show cause and effect? So and for show cause and effect, right? I got all A's. So, my mom took me for ice cream, right? We've got independent clause, independent clause connected with a comma and a fanboy, right? The economy is rebounding, so Obama's chances of re-election are increasing, right? We've got independent clause uh, and another independent clause joined by a comma and a fanboy. So we can use fanboys. Which, which words help us uh, create dependent clauses to show cause and effect? Because and since, right? Since the economy is rebounding, or because the economy is rebounding. That's a dependent clause, right? Obama's chance of re-election are increasing. Then we've got ourselves an independent clause, okay? Because I got all A's, or since I got all A's. Dependent clause, right? My mom took me for ice cream. Dependent and independent. Okay? And so then what about the third column? Our adverbs that require a period or a semicolon. Right? Therefore, thus, as a result, consequently, all these words show cause and effect as well. Right? But be careful how you use them. You can't put comma therefore. You can't put comma thus. You can't put comma consequently because they're not fanboys, right? You can only put comma so or comma for. To use these, you got to use a period or a semicolon, right? Let's look at some examples. The economy is rebounding, period. Therefore, Obama's chance of re-election are increasing, right? Cause and effect. The economy is rebounding, that's the cause. Obama's chance of re-election are increasing. That's the effect, right? And since we use therefore, we put a period. Can't use a comma, right? Or you can use a semicolon here, right? I got all A's. That's the cause, right? That's the cause. Thus, right? My mom took me for ice cream, right? So this, this transition word helps us to show the relationship between this one this idea and this idea. I got all A's, thus my mom took me for ice cream. Right? And if you want to use thus, or therefore, or as a result, you got to use a semicolon or the period like we did there. So again, just to recap, all of these things show cause and effect. So one thing leads to the other. The economy rebounds, Obama, so Obama's chances of re-election are increasing. Right? I got all A's, so my mom bought me ice cream. All of these show cause and effect, but it's just different kinds of sentences, right? Different kinds of sentences. We've got our fanboy sentences, we've got our dependent clause sentences, and here we've got it where we use a period or a semicolon. 
Okay? So now, now you're ready to go ahead and take, take quiz uh, number eight, and we'll continue with um, our next kind of uh, transition where it continues in our next video. Okay? Good luck with the quiz.